On the campus of the National University of Singapore, Professor Helen Zhao and a team of researchers say artificial intelligence is letting them see, well, a version of our thoughts. This subject demonstrated the process. Our colleague uh, Eric right now is inside the scanner. Using a database of fMRI scans, the AI first got to see what people's brains looked like as they viewed more than 1,000 photos. Then it was shown only brain scans as the subjects looked at new photos. Using a special language of brain activity the team developed, an image generator called Stable Diffusion then tried to recreate what each new photo had shown. Wow, so as long as I have seen it and you know the patterns of my brain, then the AI will read that out of my brain. Yes, 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 yes exactly. Scientists have pursued this for years, but AI makes the difference. Here's a giraffe shown to a subject. Now, ready? Here's the image the AI created. And it is sometimes very different between people. Here's the original image of a grassy field. Now here's three different versions generated from three different people's brain activity. Now, what you're seeing is a recording of previous scans, not a real-time demonstration. And this process is slow, it requires an expensive machine, and it has to be individually tailored. So unless you have taken a long time to train the model on an individual, it doesn't work. Yes, yes. at least at this stage. But we're trying okay. to generalize across subjects in the future. And that future is upon us. At the University of Texas, another team is learning to pull word sequences using a similar technique. And a multi-university team last year found that in fMRI tests, these regions of the brain reliably predicted whether a subject leaned liberal or conservative. It is all part of a grand scientific ambition to decode and maybe even transmit thought, to restore lost sight and hearing, to observe consciousness itself. But research is one thing. I worry that it quickly leaves that realm of well-meaning scientists to uh, commodification of deeply personal information about people. The last 30 years have seen an explosion of new brain tech companies and patent applications. Now, as AI makes the tech smaller and more powerful, Duke Law Professor Nita Farahani worries it'll be used to not just read minds, but judge them. This is a world in which not just your brain activity is being collected and your brain states from attention to focus is being monitored, but people are being uh, hired and fired and promoted based on what their brain metrics show. Even for the team leader in Singapore, the prospect of a corporate use of this technology without privacy laws in place is too risky. Are you the kind of person that would want to wait for better governance before you let somebody decode your brain? I might be the person who wants to try. I think once there's a commercialized product, for example, then we, I would like to wait a little bit. Mind reading, with all its unthinkable promise and peril, made real. Jake Ward, NBC News. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.